Good morning. Today is September 5th, 2024. And we have a kind of a long commentary. Ezekiel's Great Temple Vision. Let's going to straighten you out here a little bit. Okay. Um, it has been some 12 years since any recorded word of the Lord has come to Ezekiel in what seems to be a mere continuation of his previous futuristic vision, Ezekiel now sees the great temple. The vision reminds one in many ways, particularly in its attention to detail, of two earlier descriptions of the tabernacle in the wilderness and of Solomon's magnificent temple in Jerusalem. The similarity suggests that to the people of Israel, one of the most important features of the restoration is the rebuilding of their now ruined temple. Ezekiel's prophecy must surely give renewed hope to this downcast nation, yet his vision casts another image far beyond the time when the nation will be reestablished and the temple will be rebuilt. This becomes clear when it is realized that the rebuilt temple will not have the physical beauty of the one which it replaces, and that the dimensions of the great temple described here are on a much grander scale than could possibly be built in the soon-to-be-reconstructed city of Jerusalem. There are also significant differences to be seen in the religious service of the great temple. Notably missing, for example, are the Ark of the Covenant, the golden lampstand, the bread of the presence, and the veil. There is no observance of the Feast of Weeks, and no day of atonement, that holiest of all days. Nor will the Levites serve as they have served under Moses' law. Although there will still be priests, there is no high priest. Instead, there will be a prince or a succession of princes who will offer sacrifices as re representatives of the people. What Ezekiel is about to be shown is something far different from anything he or his people have known to this time. As he was at the beginning of his ministry, Ezekiel is once again taken by the hand of the Lord to the land of Israel. There he is shown symbolically the new temple to come, its worship rituals, its celebrations, its servants and priests, its laws, and the division of the land surrounding it. Okay, we're in Ezekiel 40, verse 1, and it's 572 B.C. In the 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th of the month, in the 14th year after the fall of the city, on that very day the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he took me there. In visions of God, he took me to the land of Israel, and set me on a very high mountain, on whose south side were some buildings that looked like a city. He took me there, and I saw a man whose appearance was like bronze. He was standing in the gateway with a linen cord and a measuring rod in his hand. The man said to me, Son of man, look with your eyes and hear with your ears, and pay attention to everything I am going to show you, for that is why you have been brought here. Tell the house of Israel everything you see. I saw a wall completely surrounding the temple area. The length of the measuring rod in the man's hand was six long cubits, the length, um, each of which was a cubit and a handbreadth. He measured the wall. It was measuring. It was one measuring rod thick and one rod high. Then he went to the gate facing east. He climbed its steps and measured the threshold of the gate. It was one rod deep. The alcoves for the guards were one rod long and one rod wide, and the pro projecting walls between the alcoves were five cubits thick, and the threshold of the gate next to the portico facing the temple was one rod deep. Then he measured the portico of the gateway. It was eight cubits deep, and its jams were two cubits thick. The portico of the gateway faced the temple. Inside the east gate were three alcoves on each side. The three had the same measurements, and the faces of the projecting walls on each side had the same measurements. Then he measured the width of the entrance to the gateway. It was ten cubits, and its length was thirteen cubits. In front of each alcove was a wall one cubit high, and the alcoves were six cubits squared. 
Then he measured the gateway from the top of the rear wall of one of the of one alcove to the top of the opposite one. The distance was 25 cubits from one parapet opening to the opposite one. He measured along the faces of the projecting walls all around the inside of the gateway, 60 cubits. The measurement was up to the portico facing the courtyard. The distance from the entrance of the gateway to the far end of its portico was 50 cubits. The alcoves and the projecting walls inside the gateway were surrounded by narrow parapet openings all around, as was the portico. The openings all around faced inward. The faces of the projecting walls were de decorated with palm trees. Then he brought me into the outer court. There I saw some rooms and a pavement that had been constructed all around the court. There were 30 rooms along the pavement. It abutted the sides of the gateways and was as wide as they were long. This was the lower pavement. Then he measured the distance from the inside of the lower gateway to the outside of the inner court. It was a hundred cubits on the east side as well as on the north. Then he measured the length and width of the gate facing north, leading into the outer court. Its alcoves, three on each side, its projecting walls and its portico had the same measurements as those of the first gateway. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Its openings, its portico, and its palm tree decorations had the same measurements as those of the gate facing east. Seven steps led up to it with its portico opposite them. There was a gate to the inner court facing the north gate, just as there was on the east. He measured from one gate to the opposite one. It was a hundred cubits. Then he led me to the south side, and I saw a gate facing south. He measured the jams and its portico, and they had the same measurements as the others. The gateway and its portico had narrow openings all around, like the openings of the others. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Seven steps led up to it with its portico opposite them. It had palm tree decorations on the faces of the projecting walls on each side. The inner court also had a gate facing south, and he measured from this gate to the outer gate on the south side. It was a hundred cubits. Then he brought me into the inner court through the south gate, and he measured the south gate. It had the same measurements as the others. Its alcoves, its projecting walls, and its portico had the same measurements as the others. The gateway and its portico had openings all around. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. The porticos of the gateways around the inner court were 25 cubits wide and 5 cubits deep. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated its jams, and eight steps led up to it. Then he brought me to the inner court on the east side, and he measured the gateway. It had the same measurements as the others. Its alcoves, its projecting walls, and its portico had the same measurements as the others. The gateway and its portico had openings all around. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated the jams on either side, and eight steps led up to it. Then he brought me to the north gate and measured it. It had the same measurements as the others, as did its alcoves its projecting walls and its portico, and it had openings all around. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated the jams on either side, and eight steps led up to it. A room with a doorway was by the portico on each in each of the inner gateways, where the burnt offerings were washed. In the portico of the gateway were two tables on each side, on which the burnt offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings were slaughtered. By the outside wall of the portico of the gateway, near the steps at the entrance to the north gateway, were two tables, and on the other side of the steps were two tables. So there were four tables on one side of the gateway, and four on the other, eight tables in all, on which the sacrifices were slaughtered. There were also four tables of dressed stone for the burnt offerings, each a cubit and a half long, 
a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit high. On them were placed the utensils for slaughtering the burnt offerings and the other sacrifices, and double-pronged hooks, each a handbreadth long, were attached to the wall all round. The tables were for the flesh of the offerings. Outside the inner gate, within the inner court, were two rooms, one at the side of the north gate and facing south, and another at the side of the south gate facing north. He said to me, The room facing south is for the priests who have charge of the temple, and the room facing north is for the priests who have charge of the altar. These are the sons of Zadok, who are the only Levites who may draw near to the Lord to minister before him. Then he measured the court. It was square, a hundred cubits long and a hundred cubits wide, and the altar was in front of the temple. He brought me to the portico of the temple and measured the jams of the portico. They were five cubits wide on either side. The width of the entrance was fourteen cubits, and its projecting walls were three cubits wide on either side. The portico was twenty cubits wide and twelve cubits from front to back. It was reached by a flight of stairs, and there were pillars on each side of the jams. Then the man brought me to the outer sanctuary and measured the jams. The width of the jams was six cubits on each side. The entrance was ten cubits wide, and the projecting walls on each side of it were five cubits wide. He also measured the outer sanctuary. It was forty cubits long and twenty cubits wide. Then he went into the inner sanctuary and measured the jams of the entrance. Each was two cubits wide. The entrance was six cubits wide, and the projecting walls on each side of it were seven cubits wide. And he measured the length of the inner sanctuary. It was twenty cubits, and its width was twenty cubits across the end of the outer sanctuary. He said to me, This is the most holy place. Then he measured the wall of the temple. It was six cubits thick, and each side room around the temple was four cubits wide. The side rooms were on three levels, one above another, thirty on each level. There were ledges all around the wall of the temple to serve as supports for the side rooms so that the supports were not inserted into the wall of the temple. The side rooms all around the temple were wider at each successive level. The structure surrounding the temple was built in ascending stages, so that the rooms widened as one went upward. A stairway went up from the lowest floor to the top floor through the middle floor. I saw that the temple had a raised base all around it, forming the foundation of the side rooms. It was the length of the rod, six, cubit, six long cubits. The outer wall of the side rooms was five cubits thick. The open area between the side rooms of the temple and the priest's rooms was 20 cubits wide all around the temple. There were entrances to the, south, uh, to the side rooms from the open area, one on the north and another on the south, and the base adjoining the open area was five cubits wide all around. The building facing the temple court on the west side was 70 cubits wide. The walls of the building was five cubits thick all around, and its length was 90 cubits. Then he measured the temple. It was a hundred cubits long, and the temple courtyard and the building with its walls were also a hundred cubits long. The width of the temple courtyard on the east, including the front of the temple, was a hundred cubits. Then he measured the length of the building facing the courtyard at the near of the at the rear of the temple, including its galleries on each side. It was a hundred cubits. The outer sanctuary, the inner sanctuary, and the portico facing the court, as well as the thresholds and the narrow windows and galleries around the three of them, everything beyond and including the threshold was covered with wood. The floor, the wall up to the windows, and the windows were covered. In the space above the outside of the entrance to the inner sanctuary, and on the walls at regular intervals, all around the inner and outer sanctuary, were carved cherubim and palm trees. Palm trees alternated with cherubim. Each cherub had two faces. 
the face of a man toward the palm tree on one side and the face of a lion toward the palm tree on the other they were carved all around the whole temple from the floor to the area above the entrance cherubim and palm trees were carved in the wall of the outer sanctuary the outer sanctuary had a rectangle rectangular door frame and the one at the front of the most holy place was similar there was a wooden altar three cubits high and two cubits square its corners its base and its sides were of wood the man said to me this is the table that is before the lord both the outer sanctuary and the most holy place had double doors each door had two leaves two hinged leaves for each door and on the doors of the outer sanctuary were carved cherubim and palm trees like those carved on the walls and there was a wooden overhang on the front of the portico on the side walls of the portico were narrow windows with palm trees covered carved on each side the side rooms of the temple also had overhangs then the man led me northward into the outer court and brought me to the rooms opposite the temple courtyard and opposite the outer wall on the north side the building whose door faced north was a hundred cubits long and fifty cubits wide both in the section twenty cubits from the inner court and in the section opposite the pa pavement on the out of the outer court gallery faced gallery at the three levels in front of the rooms was an inner passageway ten cubits wide and a hundred cubits long their doors were on the north now the upper rooms were narrower for the galleries took more space from them than from the rooms on the lower and middle floors of the building the rooms on the third floor had no pillars as the courts had so they were smaller in floor space than those on the lower and middle floors there was an outer wall parallel to the room rooms in the outer court. It extended in front of the rooms for 50 cubits, while the row of rooms on the side next to the outer court was 50 cubits long. The row on the side nearest the sanctuary was 100 cubits long. The lower rooms had an entrance on the east side as one enters them from the outer court. On the south side along the length of the wall of the outer court, Adjoining the temple courtyard and opposite the outer wall were rooms with a passageway in front of them. These were like the rooms of the north. They had the same length and width with similar exits and dimensions. Similar to the doorways on the north were the doorways of the rooms on the south. There was a doorway at the beginning of the passageway that was parallel to the corresponding wall extending eastward by which one enters the rooms. Then he said to me, the north and south rooms facing the temple courtyard are the priest's rooms, where the priests who approach the Lord will eat the most holy offerings. There they will put the most holy offerings, the grain offerings, the sin offerings, and the guilt offerings, for the place is holy. Once the priests enter the holy precincts, they are not to go into the outer court until they leave behind the garments in which they minister, for these are holy." They are to put on other clothes before they go near the places that are for the people. When he had finished measuring what was inside the temple area, he led me out by the east gate and measured the area all around. He measured the east side with the measuring rod. It was 500 cubits. He measured the north side. It was 500 cubits by the measuring rod. He measured the south side. It was 500 cubits by the measuring rod. Then he turned to the west side and measured. It was 500 cubits by the measuring rod. So he measured the area on all four sides. It had a wall around it, 500 cubits long and 500 cubits wide to separate the holy from the common. Then the man brought me to the gate facing east and I saw the glory of the Lord uh, the glory of the God of Israel coming from the east. His fa voice was like the roar of rushing waters, and the land was radiant with his glory. The vision I saw was like the vision I had seen when he came to destroy the city, and like the visions I had seen by the Kib Kibar River. 
and I fell face down. The glory of the Lord entered the temple through the gate facing east. Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. While the man was standing beside me, I heard someone speaking to me from inside the temple. He said, Son of man, this is the place of my throne, and the people for the soles of my feet. The place for the soles of my feet. This is where I will live among the Israelites forever. The house of Israel will never again defile my holy name, neither they nor their kings, by their prostitution and the lifeless idols of their kings at the high places. When they placed their threshold next to my threshold and their doorposts beside my doorposts, with only a wall between me and them, they defiled my holy name by their detestable practices. So I destroyed them in my anger. Now let them put away from me their prostitution and the lifeless idols of their kings, and I will live among them forever. That's a long one today. Son of man, describe the temple to the people of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their sins. Let them consider the plan, and if they are ashamed of all they have done, make known to them the design of the temple, its arrangement, its exits and entrances, its whole design and all its regulations and laws. Write these down before them so that they may be faithful to its design and follow all its regulations. This is the law of the temple. All the surrounding area on top of the mountain will be most holy. Such is the law of the temple. These are the measurements of the altar in long cubits. That cubit being a cubit and a handbreadth, its gutter, gutter is a cubit deep and a cubit wide with a rim of one span around the edge. And this is the height of the altar from the gutter to the gr on the ground up to the lower edge up to the lower ledge it is two cubits high and a cubit wide and from the smaller ledge up to the larger ledge it is four cubits high and a cubit wide the altar hearth is four cubits high and four horns project upward from the hearth the altar hearth is square 12 cubits long and 12 cubits wide the upper ledge is also square 14 cubits long and 14 cubits wide, with a rim of half a cubit and a gutter of a cubit all around. The steps of the altar face east. Then he said to me, Son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. These will be the regulations for sacrificing burnt offerings and sprinkling blood upon the altar when it is built. You are to give a young bull as a sin offering to the priests who are Levites of the family of Zadok, who come near to minister before me, declares the Sovereign Lord. You are to take some of its blood and put it on the four horns of the altar and on the four corners of the upper ledge and all around the rim, and so purify the altar and make atonement for it. You are to take the bull for the sin offering and burn it, in the designated part of the temple area outside the sanctuary. On the second day, you are to offer a male goat without defect for a sin offering, and the altar is to be purified as it was purified with the bull. When you have finished purifying it, you are to offer a young bull and a ram from the flock, with, but without defect. You are to offer them before the Lord, and the priests are to sprinkle salt on them and sacrifice them as a burnt offering to the Lord. For seven days you are to provide a male goat daily for a sin offering. You are also to provide a young bull and a ram from the flock, both without defect. For seven days they are to make atonement for the altar and cleanse it. Thus they will de dedicate it. At the end of these days, from the eighth day on, the priests are to present your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings on the altar. Then I will accept you, declares the Sovereign Lord. Then the man brought me back to the outer gate of the sanctuary, the one facing east, and it was shut. The Lord said to me, This gate is to remain shut. It must not be opened. No one may enter through it. It is to remain shut because the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered through it. 
The prince himself is the only one who may sit inside the gateway to eat in the presence of the Lord. He is to enter by way of the portico of the gateway and go out the same way. I'm losing my voice. All right, that's it for today. All right, have a great day. See you tomorrow.